I show you how to upscale goods on local hardware as you should. But some of you are gonna cry because this is about Comfy UI. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, my friends of Digital Noodles, we are gonna look into how to upscale with Comfy UI. I have here the cat image, but I also have prepared, of course, some other examples because people said, how does it look to the other image? And what is the comparison to the original image? So first of all, let's look at some images here. Now here you have a very nice portrait of a beautiful black lady. And this is the downscaled and also compressed version of that image. And here you have now the upscaled version. Yes, it doesn't look like the original photo, but compared to the little detail you have in the compressed and small version, the detail is absolutely stunning. Now here's the comparison between the photo and the upscaled version. And yes, there is some difference between those two, but still the quality is really good. Also here, I have an image that I created at the starting days of mid journey. It looks like crap. And of course, to upscale it, I downscaled it first to a lower resolution. And here is then the upscaled version, which looks a lot better. But of course, I know some of you are gonna write in the comments, the face looks wrong, the eyes look wrong and so on. Yeah, but that is because the original image looks wrong and my workflow doesn't include any kind of face fixing. This is purely about the upscaling, so it can be improved. And to be honest, you probably can do it better with SDXL and the ultimate upscaler, but we're gonna still look into the control net upscale for flux. So let's check out the workflow here. I actually built for you two versions that you can download. The link is below the video. We're gonna look into how that works. So of course you want to have the input image as makes sense. And then you want to upscale the image here. In that case, I use the length cost upscale I use a scale of five, but it is really important here to think about how much you want to upscale this. This is not improving anything. This is just making the bigger picture so you can use it as a latent input. If it is too small, you're not gonna get good details. If it is too big, probably your GPU can't handle it. All right, so of course this goes into the VAE encode and then goes into the K sampler. So far, so easy, right? Okay, so uh, of course, um, don't forget that you need the VAE. I use the AE Safe Tensor. Gonna link that under the video. This is the VAE for the flux upscaling, of course. Then what else do we need? Of course, we need a dual clip loader for the clip L or I, I'm actually not quite sure. And then we have the T5XXL FP 16, that is pretty important because if you take the eight version, doesn't give you the same quality of details. Then also in this case, we are gonna use the Flux One Depth Q50GGUF model. You can also have a better model, I actually have it over here. No, not here, here. You can download the Q8 model. I'm gonna link this list, but with the Q8 model, my Comfy UI kind of crashed, had a kind of like VRAM overload, so it didn't always work. Only every second or third time it would actually finish the image and take a lot longer. So I chose the Q5 version and still get some pretty good quality. Now in this case, because I'm using a LoRa here, I am sending the model into the LoRa as well as the clip. And in this case, I'm using the Flux Aesthetic Amateur photo LoRa that you can download from Civit AI, link below the video. You can also try the Realism LoRa Conf UI converted safe tensor, also good. You can also try other LoRa's depending on what you want to upscale. So the LoRa actually adds some flexibility to that process. Okay, let's go back here. Now, what else do we need? We have here, of course, our Flux One Depth Control Net Upscale Save Tensor file. Again, you have a link for that here. This is from my last video. Check out my last video. 
about this model and also the other new control net models and the way you can test this online everything in there and of course you click here on file and versions this says diffusion pytorch model safe tensor you want to rename that into the flux one depth control net upscaler so let's go back here to control net and of course as you can imagine first of all Let's talk about the LoRa output. This is a clip output. It goes into a clip text encoder for the positive prompt here. You want to write a description of everything you see in the image. The more you describe this, the better the upscaling can get the details. So this is not the same as with the online test where you don't need any kind of prompt. You could use a WD-14 or any kind of other clip interrogator to get the prompt out of that image but i decided to write that by hand gives me a little bit more flexibility here we have the negative prompt it stays empty of course now this goes into a flux guidance 3.5 and then this goes of course into the positive prompt negative prompt the control net loads from down here as you can imagine this image we have here as an image input is as you can see the original image so in here and of course the question is why is this the original image because this is the apply control net this is not the latent image pretty big difference and of course here we still need a vae input and then we have the positive negative that you connect to the k sampler again so far so easy and of course we have here the upscaled image that we convert with the VAE into a latent so that we have the image input as latent noise. And this goes in our latent image input. Now for the settings. Actually here it says 35 steps. You can also use 28 steps. You can play around with the steps. This is one of the deciding factors. How much time do you want to invest? How much quality do you want to have? I found that the Euler sampler with the normal scheduler renders nice and quick and gives a rather smooth result. So that's also pretty good. And then another thing you can play around with is here for the apply control net, either the strength or the end percentage or both. Fiddle around with that to see how much of freedom do you want to give to the flux model and how much control do you want to have from the control net and this kind of depends on how what kind of nice details you get out of this right okay and of course this goes then into the vae decode and then here we have our pretty kitty it looks pretty good it has some problems it's not as super good as the online demo to be honest so i think this is gonna improve in the future you can see down here with the fur it looks kind of furry, but also has this kind of graininess in it. It's not completely looking like hair. So there is some room for improvement for sure. But so far it works. And you can also join my online Discord uh, to talk with the people to figure this out more over time. But so far, I feel like it works rather well. It's a little bit hit and miss. You have to do some testing to see what works for you. If you're still here, you are happy to learn about where the models actually go. So as you can see here for our GTUF loader, we have a UNet loader, which means that in your models folder, you have or need to create a UNet folder. And then in there, you save these models. And of course, as you can imagine, the LoRa goes into the normal LoRa folder, also into inside of your models folder, and the control net model goes into your control net folder, also inside of the models folder, unless you have another place where you save your control net models. These you should already have with the clip one and the T5XXL. So that is old school, just necessity for using Flux on your computer. And of course, you have the VAE, which you might be surprised goes into the VAE folder. There you have it. Again, link is under the video. And that, my friends, is the crazy dance of the Flux Control Net Upscaling for now. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like that. Leave some love and kisses in the comments under this video because I love some praise. It's always nice. And see you in the next video. 
Um, yeah, that's it. Bye.